What up, everybody? It is your boy DJ Mixmaster, and welcome back to Soul Calibur 6. So, last video we ended up doing the Soul Chronicle for Sophitia, and now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next character, and that is Voldo. So, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Voldo Part 1 The Secret Money Pit. Ask any adventurer, and they'll know of Verci, a wealthy merchant from South Italy, and his underground treasury, the Money Pit. After getting rich in the weapons trade and earning the title of Merchant of Death, Verci set sail with his fleet to find the legendary Soul Edge. But during his quest, Verci learned his entire fortune had been lost in the chaos of a war that broke out in Italy. Half crazed, Verci hid what little he had left in the impenetrable money pit, located on a small island in the Mediterranean. There, he stationed a grotesque guardian, who silently and mercilessly disposed of all who entered, quickly becoming the fear of all looters. In recent years, however, a new rumor began to spread among some adventurers. Historic rainfall had caused flooding in the money pit, destroying most of its traps. The Guardian had also vanished, leaving the treasure free for the taking. <laughs> I can't believe we got through the money pit that easily. Thanks for the help, Ivy. Looks like that tip about the money pit being abandoned was true. Yeah, all we had to do is rely on that trusty sword of yours. Traps don't scare us as long as we have you. But hey, aren't you gonna take any of the treasure for yourself? I only care for items related to Soul Edge, and I already have what I wanted. Now I just need to find Verchi's notes. Always so serious. You're beautiful and you're strong, so, you know, we could... Huh? What the hell is that? <laughs> The sword's resonating? Hey, what did you go quiet for? Well, don't drop the treasure there. Huh? Oh, this, this is a head! Above you, ready your weapon. Huh? Ah! Uh, 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 uh. I knew this was too good to be true. That's your target, Blade, the Guardian. Rise up everything that comes near us, Blade! I missed? Oh no! Ugh, I'm at a disadvantage fighting here! My Blade! Show me the way out! Okay. <laughs> Voldo Part 2. The Master's will is absolute. On his, on his return to the money pit, Voldo was greeted by invaders whose lives he set about taking one by one. Seeing the opportunity to cause a cave-in, the warrior Ivy cut through the ceiling, blocking out Voldo from pursuing her. Apart from Ivy, only a few of them escaped with their lives. One of them had managed to get their hands on something highly valuable, however. In the deepest room of the dark underground vault, there was a magnificent sarcophagus and chair illuminated by torchlight. Before it stood a lanky, grotesque man, the guardian feared by looters, with his head bowed in respect. His name was Voldo, a dark vestige of the talented man who had once served as Verci's right hand. Long years underground had robbed Voldo of his sight and sanity. Before his dead master's sarcophagus, he reported his failures. 
Voldo deeply regretted the fact that he had left the money pit for three years in order to find Soul Edge. And although he was completely alone, Voldo heard a familiar voice. Thank you for your report, Voldo. <laughs> With new challenges often come failure. Learn from your failures, and you shall be wiser. While you were in the outside world, the money pit was flooded, and the traps were all destroyed. Now then, enough lamenting. You have important work to do. But there's one thing we must do first. I'm sure you have felt it right. The aura emanating from the swordswoman, Ivy. My merchant's intuition speaks to me. That aura comes from the legendary sword I spent years seeking. Soul Edge. She also stole a portion of my notes, which are some of my most valuable possessions. And of course, we can't let the other thieving rats get away with the treasure they stole. Therefore, Voldo, I shall give you two missions. Your first is to track down that woman and acquire all the clues you can concerning Soul Edge. Your second is to reclaim my notes, as well as all the pieces of my collection that were stolen. Some of the vermin still remain on this island. Exterminate them first, and reclaim what they stole. I'm counting on you, my loyal servant. <laughs> Look at the jewel on this sword! That's really something. Not that I expected any less from Vergi's collection. What was that sound? The wind? The adventurers had looted a number of the strange weapons Verci had collected. With Verci's treasure before him, Voldo reminisced as he held in his hands an unusual pair of blades from India. Amid the moonlight reflecting off the blood-stained blades, old memories began to resurface in his mind. What? You've never seen a pair of Jamadars? They're also known as Bundi Dagger. Other merchants call them guitars, but they're mistaken. If you wish to become the next merchant of death someday, you'll need to learn all about weapons and their uses. Here, I'll lend them to you, but make sure you return them to me. 
<laughs> My instincts tell me they will be a good match for you. Go on, give them a swing. Ah, so those blades were a gift. Okay. Voldo Part 3. Lost Glory. Disposing of the invaders' corpses, Voldo set about restoring the money pit and its traps. Once finished, he secured the entrance and headed out on a journey to complete the mission assigned to him by Vertsy. Ivy's scent was fading, but that did little to hinder Voldo. Honing his senses for years underground had given him something of a sixth sense, which allowed him to sense invisible auras that people leave behind. As Voldo moved north, tracking Ivy's unique aura, he continued reclaiming the treasures stolen from his master. Hand it over, Grandpa! Wait! Take anything you want but this! <laughs> Why? Because that one will fetch the highest price? <laughs> what was that? I just heard footsteps. Ah, my leg! Wh what's happening? Let's go. Monster you are, you'll not have what my brother left to me. The scent of Verci's treasures wafted up from the golden blade that the old merchant cradled. It was the item that launched Verci's quest for the golden treasures of the Orient, prior to his search for Soul Edge. You want to stop looking for Soul Edge? Verci. We just began your search for the golden treasures of the Orient. And now you want to go off looking for a sword that's nothing more than a rumor? You must be mad. You're either a wolf or a sheep, Enrico. It's hunt or be hunted. And only the bold come out on top. Bad enough about this. I'll lead the search for Soul Edge. And you, Voldo, will assist me each step of the way. What? But he's so young. He isn't even family. Wait, Bertie! Wait, your weapons, your face, it can't be. You're... Oh, forgive me. 
If only I would have protected our fortune during the war, Vergy would still be here. You can have the blade. He didn't take the sword? <laughs> Perhaps Voldo decided that he only needed to recover what had been truly stolen. Whatever the case, Voldo soon disappeared, leaving the golden blade with the old merchant. Voldo Part 4 A coastal town in, the, in ruins Heading north, Voldo sent something peculiar. Ivy's aura seemed to have split in two, and was heading both to the north and to the west. Though confused at this turn of events, at the back of Voldo's mind, his memories of Soul Edge called for him to head west. Trusting his instincts, he continued on towards Spain. Tracking Ivy's aura, Voldo eventually came to a desolate Spanish port town. That's when he realized something. He had once visited this port at a time when it still thrived. However, the aura's trail only led him to the ruins of an establishment known as the Blacktail Inn. The next thing Voldo knew, he was surrounded by spirits of the dead. Steal, kill, and steal again. The scent of the ocean breeze, the whispers of the name Cervantes by the dead. Together, they caused a distant memory to surge up from the deep recesses of Voldo's mind. Enlist the help of the notorious pirate Cervantes de Leon in your quest for Soul Edge. A mission to negotiate with a pirate infamous for his cruelty meant almost certain death. Still, Voldo journeyed to Cervantes' haunt, the Blacktail Inn, in order to carry out his duty. 
So, Vergie's offering me 12 Saker cannons, along with this pistol sword you brought. Hmm. It's certainly a rare item. I see Vergie taught you something about the art of appraisal. It's curious, though. If he wanted to ask a favor of me, then why did he not come here in person? Instead, he sent a whelp like you! My, my. A bullet grazes your cheek, and you don't even blink. Not bad. I've taken a liking to this weapon. Four top-of-the-line culverin cannons, and four falconets. I want Vergi to send me the same things he gave to the Spanish Armada. I'll accept the deal, and let you return with good news. It will be good for a little amusement, at least. So, Cervantes never had two weapons. He only had one. First, he ended up giving him his pistol sword. Hmm. Learn something new every day. All right, Voldo part five. Across icy plains. Why did Ivy's aura seem to be emanating from Cervantes' old headquarters? Voldo didn't have the answer, but knowing who it was, he should pursue at least represent it a significant step forward. Gathering his master's treasures that were scattered around Spain along the way, Voldo followed the trail of Ivy's aura to the east. As Voldo tracked Ivy east, her aura growing ever stronger, he became aware of two things. The first was that Ivy had crossed the mountains and was now moving west. The other was that he was not alone in this hunt. Some unknown group was also secretly tracking Ivy. Regardless of who they were, Voldo had no doubt they would only hinder his mission. So it was that Voldo decided to utilize the mountainous terrain to hunt down the hunters. The doomed woman with the blood of the cursed sword in her veins. I don't like the idea of being ordered to eliminate a mere woman. And why do we need so many people? Once you see her blade in action, you'll change your mind. Don't worry. I'm ready for whatever happens. But something's off. We should have been engaging the enemy by now. Where's the signal? What the? Who the hell's this? Let's go! Too bad. We're being attacked by an unidentified entity. I need to... 
Reports! <sighs> Having fun? Oh, right. I forgot you have no sense of humor. Never thought the day would come when I'd be saved by you. Don't expect me to thank you. <laughs> Voldo Part 6. We meet again. After disposing of all those in his way, Voldo was finally in a position to attack Ivy. He had hoped to do so without drawing attention to himself, but somehow Ivy had known about her pursuer's presence all along. Long time no see, Guardian. Or should I say, Voldo. I could sense you approaching. I've gained a lot of experience since we last met, you know. I also did a little research. Research on the Merchant of Death and the young man who worked as his shrewd right-hand man. As someone whose life was also ruined by that cursed sword, it's hard not to feel sorry for you. <laughs> I know. You want this box, right? Then fight me and win it back. And it's over. Hey. 
A loyal blade, void of any hesitation. You know, I feel a little envious of you now. <clears throat> I don't need this anymore. Take it. But let me tell you one thing. The soul edge you seek has already been destroyed. If you want to see for yourself, head to Ostreinsberg. Farewell. After throwing Verchi's box back to Voldo, Ivy leapt off the cliff and used her snake sword to disappear into the mountains. Voldo could have followed her, but the risk of dropping the precious box was too great. Since he had already collected several other treasures, Voldo decided to return to the money pit. Voldo Part 7 A Warm Glow It was safe to say that Voldo had served his master well. Arriving back at the money pit, he returned the treasures to their original places before heading to Versi's tomb to debrief his deceased master on a mission accomplished. Standing before Verci's sarcophagus once more, Voldo bowed his head and gave his report. Before long, amid an eerie glow, Verci appeared before his loyal servant. Welcome back. You have my thanks for completing both your missions. I find it hard to believe that Soul Edge was destroyed, but we will learn the truth in time. First, we should rejoice that my treasures are now back where they belong. Also, the woman may have stolen a portion of my notes, but in this box are our letters. <laughs> The letters we exchanged while you were assisting me in my search for Soul Edge. These easily contain more information than one could ever glean from my notes. I'm sure she would want to get her hands on them. However, the real reason I value this box so much... ...is because it contains... A record of my successor, completing all his training. The fact that Voldo still remained loyal to his master long after his demise proved how much they trusted each other. Deep within the dark pit, in a hollow darkness lit only by the glow of flickering flames and gold, Voldo basked in a new, blissful light, born from Berchi's everlasting trust. The names of the warriors whose fates were bound to the two swords have been etched into the very fibers of history. All right, so that was Voldo's Soul Chronicle, and with that, I believe it's a good place to take a break. Next video, we'll end up doing the next character, and that is Yoshimitsu. So, like and comment on the video, subscribe for more gameplay, and with that, see ya. Peace.